Welcome to the Luminous Star channel. This is Luminous Star. Everyone who's joining for the first time, welcome. Please join us, the Star family, by selecting that subscription button below. All right, and while you're down there, check out the description box. Don't forget to like and share today's video, which is the best revenge on a narcissist is to demonstrate your growth. All right, all of my current subscribers. Mwah. Thank you guys and gals so much for being my stars. Thank you for motivating me and inspiring me to keep the passion and drive going to keep this channel up and running. Our community is growing. Okay, our star family. I want to thank all of you for sharing your stories. Every time you share your stories, you help others to thrive forward. Please like and share today's video. Topics of discussion. Take revenge out on the narcissist by issuing them the no access card. Next topic. Appealing characteristics is what the narcissist loved and hated. About Last you. and final topic. Realizing that the narcissist is and will always be a poor investment. First point. One of the best ways to begin reclaiming your personal power from the narcissist is to take full responsibility for where you are right now in your life. Discontinue giving the narcissist credit for your continuing to have a broken heart. All right, now this is a toughie because a lot of us want to make the narcissist wrong for even breathing. <laughs> okay, I've been there, done that. All right. The narcissist, the cluster of personality can just be standing there and I'll point and I'll say, oh, you're wrong. Okay, <laughs> so one of the best ways to reclaiming your personal power back from the narcissist or cluster B personality is to take full responsibility for yours. So wherever you are right now, emotionally, financially, what have you, your health, take responsibility for Okay, that. I know the narcissist and cluster B personality, they did so and so and such and such. I get it. I understand. Been there, done that. One of the things that I learned is that that kept me in the sunken place. It didn't change anything. So all my blaming. All, you know, engaging in the blaming game with him or her. It didn't change anything. They love the cat and mouse game. They love the tit for tat. They love the one upmanship. They love the back and forth. They love the argument. Why do you think they always try to make chaos and drama happen? Because they get the narcissistic supply. So when you become reactionary, okay, when I re become reactionary, the narcissist is close to personality, they get what they want. So take full responsibility for where you are right now. Don't give the narcissist any credit for anything. Yes, this does not mean that they didn't do what they did. This does not mean that sometimes they act like they act right now and may get on your last nerve. This does not mean that this is not happening. What this means is that you are taking back your personal power. You are taking responsibility for your life. You're no longer being emotionally childlike, whereas the narcissist is ruling over you in your life. Some of us think that we are in so much power by going back and forth and giving the narcissist a taste of his or her own medicine. No, we're playing a very dirty and sick game mm -hmm. and the game is rigged so the narcissist will win and you will lose. Okay, that's just, just a reality check. Whenever a person is reactionary, the narcissist wins. If you take nothing away from this video, please take that away. Whenever a person is reactionary, the narcissist wins. Take full responsibility for where you are right now in your life. Discontinue giving the narcissist credit for your continuing to have a broken heart. They love that, by the way. If you're walking around talking about the latest shenanigans, if you're walking around telling other people how wrong they did you. The narcissist is beaming. They love it. They get the narcissist supply from that. Let's move forward. He or she is probably not that special in your life, nor does he or she deserve that much attention from you, considering the narcissist supply that they have managed to obtain from you. Okay, so they've already gotten the narcissist supply. Years and years of it. You want to continue to give them more? So this is what sobered me up years ago when I had that epiphany about giving them too much doggone attention. They've already gotten the narcissistic supply from me. Why was I giving them more? By being reactionary, by talking about them a lot, bringing them up in the conversation. Oh, they did this, they did that. Now, this is not to belittle your or my situation or our experience with narcissistic abuse. No, quite to the contrary. This means remember that crap. Remember it. Turn your pain into passion. 
Turn your pain into power. Thrive forward. Yes, you went through an ordeal. I went through an ordeal. But we're here today. We're alive. We're thriving and kicking. Okay? <laughs> Moving forward. He or she probably is not that special in your life. Well, they ought not to be. They've been using you as narcissistic supply. They're not that special. They don't deserve that much attention from you. They've been getting the narcissistic supply. All right? So one of the best ways to take out revenge on him or her is to thrive forward, focus on your own life, and take full responsibility for your own life. Put your hands back on the steering wheel and drive. Thrive forward. Okay? Let's move forward. By issuing the narcissist the no access card, you may reclaim your personal power. When you choose to discontinue providing space for the narcissist in your life, it can help to regain confidence and it may prove to be a game changer. I know for me it was. Absolutely. I had done a video on the no access card. Provide them the no access card. Issue them that no access card. That is another great way to reclaim your personal power without becoming reactionary, without giving them too much credit for your still having a broken heart. Issue them the no access card. you cards. provide the narcissist the no access card, figuratively speaking, of course, but if you really want to get creative and have a lot of laughs, literally get a business card and put on there no access and maybe get really, I mean, literally give it to them. <laughs> okay? They may think you're crazy at the moment, but if you want to have a little, you know, fun, have a few laughs, do it. Okay? I encourage that. But when you give him or her that no access card, you are not only reclaiming your personal power, but you're reclaiming your life back from him or her. And you're not even being reactionary at all. Okay? Just think about how powerful that is. That means that you're not giving them any more space in your life. They have no access to your life anymore. That means the phone calls stop. The visits stop. If you have children with him or her, this also applies to you. Provide that person the no access card. I know some of you may be thinking, well, how is that? You know, we have children together. Yes, you have children together. The children are not property. The narcissist may think that the children are property. Providing the narcissist the no access card means that you're making the statement that you are choosing. You're choosing. See, that's powerful right there. You're making a choice without including the narcissist. You're making a choice. That's very powerful. You're not looking to them to find out or get their approval whether or not you're doing the right thing. By providing them the no access card, you are making a choice to not make a space in your life for them. They don't get any access to your life, even if you have children. This means you are making the conscious decision to do something without checking with the narcissist. That's very powerful. That's part of reclaiming your personal power. You're doing something. If you have children, that is in your interest and in your children's interest. The no access card means that there are certain areas of your life, your mind, your consciousness, your spirit, your soul, your heart, that they have no interest. They, can, they have no access to. That's what that means. So when I say provide the no access card, I don't mean that this means that you are booting them physically out of your life because certain situations and circumstances do not permit that. Okay? All right. Let's move forward. Practice personal boundaries, assertion, emotional discipline, and self-preservation can be the result of choosing to become more mindful of who you are and where you are in your life. Let's move forward. Shadow work is designed to encourage one to accept the good, bad, and ugly about themselves as he or she learns to love themselves in a more balanced way. Shadow work can also encourage accepting others as they are while practicing personal boundaries. This kind of has something to do with that no access card that I was just talking about. Because certain situations, certain circumstances, the narcissist physically has to be in your life. You may have children together. Your finances may be mixed up with one another. Okay? It, uh, whatever. Shadow work can encourage you to accept others for who they really are. When a person shows you who they are, you're not going to argue. You've done the shadow work. 
That means you accepted your good, your bad, your ugly, yet you still love yourself. You think enough of yourself to do something that says, I deserve a good life. I'm not going to continue to invest in dysfunction, whether that is with a dysfunctional uh, abusive situation with a narcissist or not. That means you're not going, to, you're not operating off of the same vibration that has you continuing to invest and reinvest in a dysfunctional relationship with a narcissist or close personality. That's what shadow work can do for you. I'm speaking from experience. It sometimes is ugly because you're facing things about yourself you may not like. Been there, done that, by the way. There's certain things that, you know, you just don't want to deal with. But shadow work encourages you to face yourself and accept yourself. And love yourself enough to say, you know what? I deserve to have people around me who care about me. And vice versa. People who are going to appreciate me for me nourishing and caring for them. See, it should be reciprocated. With a narcissist, that will never happen. So shadow work is quite the game changer. It is designed to encourage one to accept themselves and others. It's a, it, you know, it's just not about the self. See, the narcissist, that's their cup of tea. That's their thing. They're all about self. But you're not a narcissist. You don't have a cluster of personality. Okay, you're, you know, and I say that because, you know, you're interested in learning how to exist on this planet with, you know, with other people. The narcissist and cluster of personality, they don't want to share with others. Whether that's their, you know, a relationship, their life, a particular space. No, it's all about them. It's all about self. Okay, so shadow work absolutely is a game changer. You're simply stating that there's certain areas of your mind, your consciousness, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your life that the narcissist has no access to. Physically, they may be around for, you know, certain reasons. However, when you provide the no access card, that's really what you're saying. Because your mind has changed. You're changing. You're transitioning. So now you are learning how to accept yourself as well as others. Okay, so this is something that, again, is a game changer. Let's move forward. The narcissist tends to have a black and white mentality, therefore views others as good or bad. The narcissist found your appealing characteristics sometimes appealing and other times repulsive. Part of the crazy making of narcissists is to influence others to bend themselves up into a pretzel in order to obtain his or her approval. Okay, we can also include in there love. So that's part of the crazy making of the narcissist. They love to influence others to bend over backwards, to bend themselves up in pretzels, to jump through fiery hoops in order to obtain or hope to obtain their approval, yet their love. So narcissists tends to view people in a black and white term. Like, okay, you know, either this person is, is good or they're bad. There's no gray area. They don't see, narcissists don't see that a lot of people on the planet, has a, they have a shadow side as well as a side that is of a higher consciousness. Okay? They don't see that. There's no gray area with them. In other words, they don't understand that most of us human beings are complex, meaning that sometimes we are operating from a lower vibrational frequency or lower consciousness, and sometimes we're operating from a higher vibrational frequency or a higher consciousness. With the narcissist and cousin personality, there's no gray area. In other words, either you're all bad or you're all good, and it fluctuates from time to time. This is part of the crazy making. Sometimes your characteristics that are very appealing the narcissist found them to be repulsive. And then other times they were able to exploit your appealing characteristics, such as being able to love and nourish and care for them. So they exploited that. Whenever you experienced, just think about it. Some of you have had the situation where as you were expressing your emotions, the narcissist got busy exploiting your emotions, exploiting that you can express your emotions. I'll put it that way. So when you express emotions, they exploit your emotions. 
All right. So the narcissist and cosmic personality, whatever your appealing characteristics are right now, sometimes they will find those characteristics repulsive. And sometimes they will find them appealing. Usually they find them appealing when they can exploit your ability or capacity to express a higher vibrational frequency emotion such as love. Okay, they will exploit that. As long as they can exploit it, oh, you're good. But the moment they cannot exploit it, they're repulsed by your positive or your appealing characteristic, which is practicing personal boundaries. That's an appealing characteristic. You're not a doormat. So as soon as the narcissist finds that you're not a doormat, oh, then they don't like you. They, you get a thumbs down. Or you, they hit the dislike button. Okay? All right. So let's move on. Part of the crazy making of narcissists is to influence others to bend themselves up into a pretzel in order to obtain his or her approval. By choosing instead to demonstrate personal growth is one of the best ways to take revenge out on the narcissist while getting off of the crazy making roller coaster ride. Okay, so as I mentioned about the crazy making, they will influence others to bend themselves up into a pretzel, jump through fiery hoops in order to hopefully get their love or approval all right so instead of doing that a person can choose to demonstrate their personal growth that means not become reactionary when something happens this is going to take some time patience and practice to do but the less and less time you become reactionary this is another sign that you are reclaiming your personal power and you're demonstrating where you are in life that's your personal growth we're all growing whether at a snail's pace or not we're all growing. All right? So demonstrate your personal growth instead of becoming all caught up in the drama of the shenanigans that they're pulling. The narcissist and cosmic personality, as long as they know they can push your buttons and you become reactionary, they can feed off of your energy field and they're loving it because their false self-image is ruling, it's being fed, it's surviving and thriving while on the other hand, you're being drained. So choose instead to demonstrate your personal growth. That's one of the best ways to take revenge out on the narcissist. I know that might sound ridiculous to some of you, and some of you may be saying, oh, that, how is that going to work? Well, number one, we all know that you cannot change a narcissist. So by demonstrating your personal growth, you're not trying to change him or her. This is very powerful because you are choosing for yourself you're reclaiming your personal power. You're demonstrating that you're growing. You're thriving. You're blossoming. You're not, you don't have time for the narcissist. You're simply demonstrating your personal growth. You're focused on that. So that's very powerful when you put it that way. So demonstrate the personal growth. That is one of the best ways to take a revenge out on a narcissist. Is letting him or her know that you are super focused on your life now. You're super you're you don't you're not trying to get dragged into their shenanigans anymore. This will take patience and practice. All right? There are, will be times that you will slip. Don't beat yourself up for that. This is a crazy making roller coaster ride that the narcissist usually creates. Let's move forward. Compliance is a signature mark of co-signing to the shenanigans diabolical tactics and crazy making of the narcissist and or those with a closing personality. Investing in dysfunctional relationships with narcissists and those with a closing personality is and always will make for a poor, for a very poor investment. Absolutely. Take it from a person who's done it. This is a very poor investment. Okay? While you are making the deposits the narcissist will be withdrawing and it will never change. You're never going to be the one to withdraw. So investing in a dysfunctional relationship with narcissists and closing personalities will always make for a very poor investment. Compliance is a signature mark of co-signing to the shenanigans, the diabolical tactics, and the crazy making of the narcissist and closing personality. Okay, all of this makes up for the dysfunctional relationship. But don't continue to comply to the dysfunctional relationship, therefore co-signing all the crazy making and the shenanigans in a narcissistic supply. 
Okay, don't no co-sign for that because you're going to be the one again that's going to end up the in debt. The narcissist is going to continue to withdraw and withdraw and withdraw. And sooner or later, you're going to be the one served with the insufficient funds notice. Okay, think about that for a minute. Let's move forward. Narcissist likes to influence others around him or her to focus upon what has their hearts broken. As long as one is miserable, the narcissist can keep his or her false self-image well supplied. That's pretty self-explanatory. Let's move on. The addiction of the narcissist to have the attention of others can be so toxic that provoking negative attention is better than no attention at all. Beware of this dangerous tug of war of control that many narcissists like to play. It is rigged for you to lose. Absolutely it is. This is a sick game and it's rigged for you to lose. The narcissist is very well aware that you more than likely have gotten tired of the shenanigans. So if they can get you to become reactionary or they can influence you to become reactionary, then it becomes a tug of war of the will, okay? Or a war of the will. You know, now you're at war to control. This is something that the narcissist loves to play. It's a very sick game. A war of the wills. A war of control. So beware of this. It's a very dangerous and sick game. It's rigged for you to lose. The narcissist and the cluster of personality just know this, they are very addicted, if not obsessed, with obtaining the attention of others. And sometimes, the negative attention is what they crave the most. The narcissist and cluster personality, they love to provoke other people to react in a very negative way. It seems that they get much more supply out of that. Let's move forward. First tool. Build and work a support base in order to have a constructive outlet to express your emotions and thoughts. Tool number two, keep a journal in order to keep track of how far you've come, where you are now, and where you are heading. The narcissist has nothing to do with your current status unless you choose to provide him or her that credit. Next tool, practice self-preservation, emotional discipline, assertion, and personal boundaries, which naturally demonstrates to the world who you are and where you are in your life and within yourself. Live your life. It is a gift. Instead of the narcissist claiming your life, believe it or not, the narcissist claims the lives of those who narcissistically supply him or her. They claim their life. This is why we keep making the statement, reclaiming your personal power. That means you're telling the narcissist and cluster personality they no longer have the right to claim your life. You're not even a child anymore. Practice self-preservation, emotional discipline, assertion, and personal boundaries, which is the best narcissist repellent. You are taking charge of your life again. Is it going to be easy? No. Because for a lot of us, we have become very accustomed to someone else managing our lives. Long after we became 18 years old. Okay? So, uh, again, practice self-preservation, emotional discipline, assertion, and personal boundaries. Critical question, critical question number one, what are your expectations of the narcissist? Why? Compare your answers to the behavior patterns. So what of are your expectations of the narcissist? And why do you have those expectations? And compare those to what's actually happening. How do they actually behave? In other words, this is a reality check. Compare your answers to what the narcissist is actually doing in your life right now. Second critical question, how well do you think you know the narcissist as opposed to how well you know yourself? Which one takes priority in your life? Why and how? So how well do you think you know the narcissist? Okay, how well do you know yourself? Which one is more important to you? You knowing them or you knowing yourself? Why is it more important to you that you know yourself as opposed to knowing the narcissist. Only you can answer that question. I cannot answer that question for you. No one can answer that question for you. So why is it more priority for you to know the narcissist? I'm just switching it around now. Why is it more important for you to know the narcissist than you knowing yourself? And how 
does that show up in your life? Whichever one is more priority, how does that show up in your life? Are you buying the narcissist a lot of gifts while they don't buy you any? That's how that shows up in your life. Which one takes priority? You knowing yourself or you knowing the narcissist? How is that showing up in your life? How is that unfolding in your life? Believe it or not, the clues are all there. Is the narcissist and plus B personality on your mind more than you are on your mind? Your children, if you have children with him or her, are the children priority? See, all of this is very important. I know for me it was. I started taking a look at how well I treated myself versus treating the uh, cluster B personality. And I woke up because I said, whoa, wait a minute. I'm treating the cluster B personality a little bit better than I'm treating myself. This is not right. <laughs> okay, what's wrong with Third and picture? final critical question. What are some of the things that the narcissist ever did to influence you to believe that he or she loved you? How about now? So what are some of the things that the narcissist did or what do they do now? that influences you to believe that he or she loved or loves you okay because right now you might be in a situation right now with the narcissist so how about now compared to what went on in the past in other words check the history use the history as a reference guide don't use the history to get all nostalgic and you going back there no we don't want that <laughs> okay so use your past as a reference guide this is something that i do right now when it comes to my past, I only use it as a reference Those guide. chapters are closed. If I reopen those chapters, it's only as a reference guide. Like when you go to the library and you get a reference book. And on book, that note, I want to encourage my uh, stars to do that. Thrive forward. Use your past only as a reference guide. What's done is done. Those chapters are closed. We get into trouble when we reopen those chapters. Been there, done that. But this is not to encourage you to beat yourself I'm up. I'm just pointing out how when, when narcissists do things, that's a telltale sign of what's really going on. So when a person starts to, you know, say, well, the narcissist loves me and I love them, that's a very dangerous place to be in, in my opinion. Because what are they really saying? So this is why I ask this critical question. What are some of the things that the narcissist does or what have they ever done to influence you? That's a big word right there for this sentence. Influence you to believe that he or she has loved you or they love you now. What are they doing exactly? It's not about what they're saying. Not really. Even though sometimes it's important to really pay careful attention to what the narcissist is saying because there's a thing called wordplay. This is when they begin to confess something that they have done to somebody else or what they are about to do to you in order to get the narcissistic supply. But what's more important is what they are doing in your life. So what are they doing that has you walking around saying that they love you and you love them? What is, what's going on exactly? Because more than likely, you're being influenced to believe something that may not match reality. Now, I'm not scolding you. I'm only saying, as a person who's been there, done that, there's certain things the narcissist may be saying that may influence you to believe something that's just not true. Okay, let's move forward. References and resources. Please check out the description box below for the references and resources. I'm Luminous Star. I want to thank everyone for joining me today or tonight. Wherever you are, of course, I wish you the very best. Stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos. Our home, incubator of life. Through our lines.